Wake that ass up early in the morning. The Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV Charlemagne the Guy. We are the Breakfast Club. We got a special guest in the building. Come on, man. One of the architects of, of this thing we call hip hop, man. One of the people who helped lay the foundation for this thing we called hip hop. We wouldn't have jobs if it wasn't for this brother right I wouldn't here. be a DJ if it wasn't for this brother. And <laughs> most all. people out there, well, most DJs out there wouldn't be DJs if it wasn't no, for this brother. No, all DJs wouldn't be That's DJs. Right. <laughs> if it wasn't for this brother. Ladies and gentlemen, Grandmaster Flash. How's Welcome. Thank you. Good How's morning, Black man? man. Thank you. Thank you for having me, man. I appreciate man, this. Hey, come on, man. Happy I to really, have you. I Absolutely. Really, I really appreciate this, man. You know, we, we celebrated the 50 years of hip hop, uh, you know, this, this year. year. And Envy and I was on the radio having a conversation, and it just felt like, you know, the, the architects, like that era of the 80s, you know, wasn't getting honored properly. And none of us are here if, if that if that foundation isn't laid. You said the 80s, the 70s. Correctly, the 70s, yeah. The 70s from the beginning and the 80s, I feel like weren't getting honored, you know, properly. How do you feel about that, Grandmaster Flash? And that's one of the reasons why I feel that it is paramount that I do lectures, I do corporate, uh, corporate tours and lectures, and I've been doing them for private people, but now I kind of want to do this for the public so they can understand that this thing didn't just fall out of a tree. It didn't just go from the 70s to where we are. You know, there was four DJs that did this. Cool Herc was on the West. AB was Bronx River. African Man DJ, DJ Breakout was the North. I was the East. And pretty much, this is how it, it, it really started. And you gotta realize this, ladies and gentlemen, we did this with no internet, no social media, no apps, no quick hardware where it would just work. A lot of these things, as I was telling you, Envy, I had to do this with nothing, going into the backyards and you know, getting old receivers and old turntables and stuff and kind of like jury rigging my sound system. For people listening, when he says the West, the South, the North, he's not talking about West Coast. He's Don't talking about New York. New York. The Bronx. The Bronx. B Bronx. Uh, I want to clear that up. And also, you know, I was talking to, of course, Grandmaster Flash behind the scenes. A lot of you didn't know, you know, where we had the ability to go to these stores and buy equipment, yeah. mm. he had to actually make it. So his first sound system actually came from old cars in a junkyard. He would pull the speakers out of the cars in a junkyard and make sound systems to play at parks and parties and wherever wherever right. it was. So you had to actually know electronics and it just wasn't just about DJing. Right. So what, what got you into wanting to be a DJ? I know you were telling me the story behind the scenes that you know you were just intrigued by electronics in your house when your mother right. or father plugged something in and you wanted to understand how it works. So you would start effing up the crib pretty much to figure it out. Yeah, I mean, when I was a toddler, everything in that house that was electrical, I was intrigued or how did that happen? So I used to unscrew, unscrew the backs of the stereo in the living room, my sister's hair dryers, the table radio, all these things. And also what got me into this, when I was a, a, a toddler, my dad was a collector of records. Mm -hmm. And I'm on this respectable airwaves, mm -hmm. so I will just say, when I got caught touching his vinyl as a toddler, he used to heavily Rapper man me, <laughs> right? With your ass. Okay, with your ass. ass. Oh, oh, I can say that. Yes, yeah, you can. Yeah, absolutely. And what I used to do as a kid, I waited for him to go to work, and when the door slammed, I went back in that closet. And the rule was, you know, don't touch the brown box in the living room. And I used to watch Dad when he came home from work, how he operated it. So I figured out how to get into this closet where his stuff was, and I would take this square thing, that had a black disc and he would put it in this brown box and sound would come out of it. That was probably my first love. But then moving forward, guys, when I heard a drum break from one of the most important black artists of that time, his name was Curtis Mayfield, mm -hmm. move on up. That break, and, then, and you and I can relate here, mm -hmm. that break was about I'd say about five minutes of mm -hmm. just the drums. Mm -hmm. and, and I thought all records was like that. So when I started collecting my records, the drum break was like five, 10 seconds. Mm -hmm. So what also got me into the DJing is I used to watch the disco DJs, like my boy, Flowers, Pete Jones, and I noticed that their transitions were glass smooth. Mm -hmm. But then my boys knocked on 
my door at my mom's house and said, we want to take you to this other side of town to watch these other DJs. And respectfully, I was wondering why is it that everything that he was doing was a train wreck? He was playing the incredible music, had the incredible sound system, but why was he playing like that? You know, because the rules and the laws, you know, especially mm -hmm. if you got people on the dance floor, the idea is to keep everybody in unison. Correct. They should not be trying to find a beat as you transition. So from that point on, it's when I came up with the quick mix theory. You know, what is, for, the, what is the quick mix theory? Mm -hmm. From a mathematical perspective, I took sonics and threw it out the window because if I play a song, I hear it a certain way. If I if I put the headphone on your ear, you hear it a certain way, and Shaw, you hear it a certain way. Mm -hmm. So I said to myself, I'm going to take that out of the equation and I'm gonna just collect records from all genres, pop, rock, jazz, blues, funk, disco, R&B, foreign, American, and just listen to the drum break. And I found that unlike Curtis Mayfield, these drum breaks on these other records always, always short. That made me quite angry. I was disappointed. So in mom's house, I came up with a hand mechanic, fingertips to vinyl, fingertips to crossfader, DJ style that is used by every hip hop DJ on planet Earth. And I figured out a way of counting the bars as the vinyl went forward and how many times I would have to rewind it back to get back to the top of the break and take that 10 second break and make it seamlessly 10 minutes. So if you on the floor and I'm playing a Michael Jackson drummer break, I'm playing that for 10 minutes and I'm gonna flip to a, a, a London break or a German mm -hmm. break or, or whatever break and this became the way. And then what happened was these incredible people called hip hop producers took this style of the seamless loop and I'm gonna show you that on the wheels of steel. You understand what I'm saying? Now the same he's saying that the, 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 I, I, your quick mix theory tur turned into what people call loop uh, sampling, basically. Uh, correct. That's exactly, exactly what it is. Yep. Yeah, yeah. So That's he, exactly he would, what he it would is. That's exactly what it is. would bring it back yeah. from the beginning. But one thing you'll learn from this interview with Grandmaster Flash is he's not just a musician when it comes to turntables. He's actually, no disrespect, he's a nerd and geek. Like, he wants to understand the mechanics of it. Right. Most people just want to understand the success of it and be successful and be a big right. name. But he under actually understands... The mechanics of of music, DJing, transitioning, records, record players, mixes, just and, and this is just for having a, a thirty second conversation with him. I figured that out. No, what, what, what I find so interesting about this in the last five minutes, you explained where DJing started, yep, and where hip hop production started. Correct. So when yeah. people call you an architect and say you're one of the founding fathers of hip hop, that is why. Absolutely. Thank you. And I, and I I gotta tell you, it's like. I've been listening to a lot of the press and the promotion, you know, from last summer to now. And this particular area of who, what, where, and why is not talked about. Mm -hmm. Why aren't we talking about what BAM did? And quite frankly, the gang thing was really bad back then, Shaw. And if he didn't calm that down, there would have not been no block parties. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And then as DJ Breakout in the North, he came up with a sound system where he used garbage cans as his, as his bass bottoms. Mm. Cool Herc had an amazing sound system. I had the shittiest sound system, but I had a hand technique that people wanted to see. You know, so it's just these kind of things where I go around doing these corporate tours. It's called the birth of a culture, corporate tours. And I'm doing, I've been doing a lot of these things privately, but I think that now I have to go to the universities, to the YMCA's, and, and do this public. I'm going to do two major lectures, one in Manhattan and one in the Bronx, where it's going to be free. And I want people to really mechanically understand mm -hmm. how I came up with this quick mix theory and how it connects to where we are right now. You know, mm -hmm. I'm going I'm to keep it real with you. I didn't create hip hop. I didn't coin the word. I created the tools that allowed hip hop to transcend from where it was to where it is. And without these tools like the beatbox, the turntables, the quick mix theory, 
the extending of a bed of music so a human being can speak on, so that the rapper could be born. These are the things that I did, and these are the things that the world is not talking about. Let me ask you Especially a question. Especially this year, because it feels the like the focus years. is on the artist, but it should be a lot more focused on the DJ. Well, all and the, the producer. Above, yeah. All yeah. of the above. I was gonna ask, you know, how do you feel when you look at something that you created, right? And you created out of love, right? Yes. What you said just now, you didn't say it was money. You didn't say I did this because I wanted money. You said mm -mm. I enjoyed it. I love listening to music. I love playing in the park. And then you see in this the commercial success of hip hop, right? I I, I sent Charlemagne something this morning about Karis one saying why he didn't want to perform at the Grammys. He felt like the Grammys never respected hip hop. Mm. So why come now? How do you feel when you see the commercial success of hip hop and all these brothers and sisters making money and all these companies making money off of hip hop, but some of the founders are not making the money that's deserved because if it wasn't for you guys, nobody wouldn't be able to make the, that money. That's a twofold answer. Mm -hmm. Just think, MV, this thing that I did could have missed. And if this all would have missed, would, I wouldn't be here talking to you right now. So that's one side of it. It exploded. But there are, like, there are some companies out there giving away hundreds of thousands of dollars. I've seen this on the internet just recently. But there are those, man, that are in the, in the hood that didn't have the commercial success. Nobody's saying, hey, here's $500,000 for you or $100,000. They're not saying that. Like, there are those who lost their life that are not even here to even enjoy this. Mm -hmm. And they have families. That's right. You know, so for me, I have to, until God takes me, I have to go around and mechanically break this thing down. I think that people should interview the producers. Like that just, that boggles my mind mm -hmm. because they're the ones that really know how the record is made. They're the one that stays in the studios for, for two and three days to make sure the record is goes from start to finish before the masters is handed in. You know, so for me, and people should know more about Cool Herc and their team. They should know who Coca Rocket is. Like, they're going around saying he was a rapper. He was, he's a DJ. I used to watch him. You know, and then there's Timmy Tim and it's the original Clark Kent. You know, people should know who Breakout's team is. It's Baron, you know, and Bam, and Bam Bada and Jazzy J and Grandmaster Flash and Grand Wizard Theodore. Like, all these people and all these names, you don't hear nothing. Yeah, that's right. Mm -hmm. Talk to about them. When people are putting out this press, they're not even coming to ask, well, Flash, what do you think? And respectfully, I'm going to say this. For you to really firsthand know what this, what this is, you have to be at least 60 years old. Mm -hmm. And I'll be kind and say 58, 57. That means you had a firsthand hand. I shot of seeing us do this. If you are 30 or you're 40 and you are saying that you are a, a hip hop uh, extraordinaire person, nine times out of 10, if you ain't talking to Flash, you ain't talking to Herc, you ain't talking to Bam, you got secondhand information. And, 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 you, and you gotta realize you're feeding the babies in, like incomplete information. And this is one of the reasons why, because I tour 150 countries a year. So financially, I'm good. I'm cutting all that in half because I got to go to these universities, I got to go to these YMCAs, and I got to teach these babies of where this thing come from. Because what saddens me is this. Mm -hmm. If you are from a black family, you know who Miles Davis is. Right. If you're from a white family, you know who the Rolling Stones is. Why is there so much of a blur of who, what, and why, where, and how when it comes to hip hop? Why is that? I think, I think we gotta be the generation to do that because to your point, if you're 60 years old now, you're probably a grandfather, grandmother. Yeah. Our grandparents weren't listening to hip hop, you know? Okay. But now when you, we got grandparents and grandfathers, grandparents who were listening to hip hop, and then parents who grew up in hip hop, they can tell their kids, hey, this is where it started. Right, because like you said, most <clears throat> if you if you're in the age of forty to fifty, a lot of them hip hop started with Run DMC. Right, 
LL yeah. Cool J. Yeah, yes. I remember my, that, I remember that's my, where it started from. Because even me, like you know, what? my parents weren't into hip hop, but I was. But the first record I ever bought was Run. Yeah, my dad was seventy something. He didn't he didn't like hip hop at the time. Okay. He wanted he was like, you need to listen to James Brown. Temptation. James Brown is the original rapper. Four yeah, tops. He rhyming. Okay. You know he yeah. didn't, he he didn't know nothing about hip hop. He didn't want to hear none of that. Correct. Respect. You know. Well, I I think for me, <clears throat> and this is such a, a wonderful time period, but just think of it like this here. And, you know, sometimes this makes me want to cry sometimes is come August, like the mayor gave me August 4th mm-hmm. and Cool Herc is August 11th. Come August 12th, there's going to be a brand new trend. So we have to get it right now mm-hmm. as a black art form that is that has done so much for so many people. Of course. We have to get it right between now and August 11th or it's gonna go down in history, incomplete or incorrect. And that scares the crap out of me. So, so, so it's safe to say you don't believe the DJ gets the respect they should when it comes to their contribution Absolutely to not. <laughs> because especially the hip hop DJ that understands the quick mix theory and the mechanics, which I will show you, is because that led to the sampling and that led to these records being made and that's what we're celebrating. So we're celebrating the entire cake but let's go back and celebrate the, the, the celebrate the the uh, the eggs and the flour and the water and the vanilla. Mm-hmm. How the cake was made. The process. The process. Let's, let's celebrate let's that. A, let's see some of the process, Grandmaster. Let's Flash. do that. Yeah. Action, now, can, action speak louder than words. Now can I can I go right to yeah, the of course, of course, of course. Of course. All right, I'm gonna need a pan. I need one of these pens. So you now. Shop here, Nick? So, you got a sharpie. He got a sharpie. He got one. So, got you. Got you. I want to say to you, Envy. Yes, sir. I appreciate you, man. You said something a couple of minutes ago that you thought I would be insulted. I grew up as a geek. I was not hip. I was afraid to rap the chicks. I stayed in my house grabbing junk from the junkyard and trying to piece together somewhat of a sound system. And then I came up with a a mathematical equation to what is hip-hop, and I call it Black math. Okay. Mm. Quick mix theory. Black math. It was impossible for me to write a, a sonic equation because a sonic equation would then fall under kinetics and then it would have been really deep for me to write this. So I wrote it from a mathematical perspective. The brain captures a melody in four bars and that's why I called it the quick mix theory. Mm-hmm. It's black math. Every DJ uses the hand mechanics of this DJ technique. Mm-hmm. This got me in so much trouble because I was putting crayons on the record, putting my hand on the records. Connoisseurs wanted to nail me, <laughs> disrespect me. They really hated me Shaw, because they would put the record inside of a, a little white paper and put it inside and, and, and use the velvet brush to clean it off and they would carefully put it inside the jacket me. Fuck that. So I got a lot of flack for doing this. So now, there's vinyl one. Mm-hmm. I'm a horrible drawer. So good. We get it. We get it. The mix in the middle. Mm-hmm. Vinyl two. Mm-hmm. Vinyl two. So, this one, the crowd's listening to this. It's going clockwise. And this is the one that has to go counterclockwise. In this particular style of DJing, that every hip-hop DJ has adopted, makes the tone arm 99.9% useless. But I would watch those DJs that did this heavy on the tone arm, and every time they would transition, it was a train wreck. Four bars forward is equal to six counterclockwise Revolutions equals full loop 
extraction. Every DJ and every hip hop producer that, that made sample based music uses this theory. And me and Envy, we were talking earlier, and he, was, he said something to me, some people have never seen turntables. That's right. right. That's real. I've got so much to do. I've got so many places to go, Shaw. So many people because I don't know if Breakout's going to get an interview or if Cool Herc or Coke is going to get an interview or Bam. So right now it's pretty much on me. So the race is on until August. So now with this this process, for people that don't know, that's not a DJ, what you're basically saying is back in the day you, you came up with this formula because there were no instrumentals, so you had to create your own, I right? Agree. Or the drum break. Was or the drum break. So, so, so short. short. You had to make it longer so people can actually dance and the right. transition will be like how transitions should be. So what you hear now when somebody, especially in New York, where most DJs slam music, meaning you'll go from uh, a fast record, 100 tempo to a 70 tempo mm. with no transition mm. and you slam it. So this was a creation where people wouldn't stop dancing and the party would go thoroughly through and people wouldn't even miss a step. Right. Which a DJ is supposed to do. Right. And with this, Meaning forward, four bars forward, six bars backward. You would go six bars backward to to go back another four bars right. and bring this side, right. bring the exactly. left side six bars back. So the four and six went in the verb. That that was the inversion. The four Correct. to six factor is what I called it. And I say four plus six is ten. So if there was a rapper in front of me and he needed a quiet area of the record where the singer wasn't singing and it was the least people playing with the drummer. And I'm going to play a few of those things. Yeah, show us that. Yeah, show us so people can, can see. Can you answer one question, Flash? Yeah. You know, you, of course, you know, they talk about Grandmaster Flash and the Furious Five, you know, mm. produced the the message, but they for, said you- First they, DJ to get a Grammy, by the way, but go ahead. Yes, but they, I, I read some things where they said you had nothing to do with the production of it. Okay, I had something to do with all of it because that company chased me to get my group. The Furious Five. The whole group. Gotcha. There was a club I played called Disco Fever. Mm -hmm. And I brought hip hop to this club and Sal Abatello gave me, I wanted a Saturday, he gave me a Tuesday. Of course. So uh, Most clubs do that. He gave me, I called it Terrible Tuesday. The off night. <laughs> right, but in about two months time. Came the most I popular. Was, I was yeah. live wanting that, that, that Saturday. Thank you, Sal. You know, so for me, the message probably I had least to do with, but I had most to do with it because it was my group. And I'm sure they used your technique, right? Yeah, they do. They use, they use my technique to make all their records. The message was an original record, but they knew when they had the Sugar Hill Gang, they heard of us in the streets. The streets was already ringing, Grandmaster Flash and the Furious Five, so. She used to come to Terrible Tuesdays every Tuesday just to see how it was how it was going down. So Who is she? Sylvia Robinson. Sylvia Robinson, okay. You know, so Owner of Sugar Hill. Yep. Did I have anything to do with that record? Minimal. But I had everything to do with it because she needed to have us. So here we are. I want to ask one more question before you get on the turntables. How sure. do you feel about DJs today with the auto mixing buttons and the different programs that make it easy Serato. for them to call like themselves I, I, like DJs? I'm using, I'm, I'm, I'm using Serato, Serato right now. Or even right. CDJs. Right. I, and you know what it is? I, I, put it this way. I'm a scientist first. I'm a geek first. So I've, I've been pushing the envelope for 52 years. So I respect anybody that's doing it, but follow the laws of the art. Transition. I think the things that drive me crazy when I go out, which is every now and then, MVs, you know, I'm listening to the DJ and, the, and this, the, the, the train wreck thing. You know, that there really drives me crazy. A lot of today's music is really one tempo based, so it's easy to go from one to the other. So why, how are you crashing this record into this record? With us, back, we had to use the pitch Correct. Quite a bit yep. mm -hmm. to make this record beat match with Slow this fast, record. Of course, these records here are almost coming out of the oven. They're all the, the same tempo almost. So I don't understand why is it that these people who play today don't 
beat match. Mm -hmm. That there makes me totally crazy, and it goes against <laughs> the laws of what we learned. Mm -hmm. Let's see what. Let's see some transitions, man. Let's do it. If you can, the first thing I guess, if if you can, what you talked about the first, how you would make your own instrumental back in. Let me play the first record. That got me, because some people think that there was another DJ that inspired me. Mm -hmm. I came from a totally different perspective, scientific and mathematical. Mm -hmm. So I came from nothing with my style. Gotcha. Nobody put me on. <laughs> I envy. This record was the groundbreaking record why I wanted to DJ. Curtis Mayfield, 1970. How old were you? 12, going into 13. Wow. I'm 66 now. Left. Break is still going. Yep. The break is still going. It was five minutes, right? This five record minutes. was... So for life for me, I was, why is that... Why is everything else so short? And when I started playing other genres of record, because I was raised in a home where, depending on which sister was on the stereo, I would hear Motown, disco, funk, jazz, blues, R&B. Like, I grew up where music had no color. A dope jam could be a white jam, a black jam, a foreign jam, an American jam. So, so Charlamagne, I, I said I was gonna, I needed your help, right? Okay. So, could you come over here, please, Shaw, before I play? Try to scratch this record. Try I, mean, to... I, I know. He's a DJ. Right. 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 So let me let me let me. Let me, let me. Uh, well, uh, he's a DJ allegedly. Uh, uh, I don't know if he can do this. <laughs> I don't know if he can do this. So, uh, me, so, so listen now. Try to bring it back. Yeah. Try to try to try to try to try to. Try to bring the back, oh. the record back. Just, just, but be gentle, be gentle with your fingers, and try to just go right back, back, back. back. <laughs> I practiced before. No, you no, didn't. Okay. <laughs> try, just try to go backwards. Try to go counterclockwise. You're too hard. You're too oh, yeah. nice, nice. <laughs> go, right now, now. No, that's wrong. Okay. No, no, try, try to go back. These are heavy. No, these are heavy. They're heavy. Okay, now stop. Okay. So, my mother was a seamstress, right? So. I was lucky to touch polyester, mm. rayon, cotton, you go. silk, mm. leather, mm -hmm. suede, felt. So you created the slip mat? Yes, I did. Oh my goodness. You created the slip mat too? That's yes, crazy. So, so, let me, so let me tell you, let me oh, break it down. Matter, I'm going to pop, pop the collar for you. So okay. when you buy the turntables, well, it comes with a rubber piece, right? right. Yes, the rubber right piece you, you cannot DJ with, so all right. DJs have to toss it. Right. So you had a slip mat. Well, we didn't know where a slip mat was, so back then the record came in a, in a plastic package. We would open up the plastic package and make our own slip mat. The slip mat is on this one. But that was Grandmaster Flash's idea. I just told you, so... You got a mic right I, there, Flash. Flash, when, you got a mic right ran, there. When I ran into that problem, right, mm -hmm. I grabbed an album, mm -hmm. and I ran to the nearest, nearest material store, and I touched rayon, silk, mm -hmm. uh, cotton, polyester, leather, felt. Now, the problem with felt is when you put it on your... When you, when you buy a, 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 a portion of it... Yep. It's limp. Mm -hmm. So when my mother wasn't looking, first I would cut it out mm -hmm. the size of an album, right? And I would, when my mother wasn't looking, I went up in the closet in her cabinet in the kitchen and I got spray starch. And I made it so that it was stiff. But I called it a wafer. And the reason why I called it a wafer is because during Easter, mom would dress us up to go to the church, to the nearest church. And you know that little white, that, that white thing they give you during Easter, yeah, yeah, yeah. I called it a wafer. And it went from what that is to this. Damn. You didn't get to trademark any of this. I wish you trademarked that, Flash. Jesus Christ. But wait a minute. It, but wait a minute. It, it, it doesn't end there because I still got some resistance on a certain table with just this. So when mom would make baked chocolate chip cookies, 
she would use this paper that felt like wax. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So now I put the the plastic, the wax on the platter, and I put this on top of that. Wow. So now the platter moved comfortably clockwise while I can go Back counterclockwise. That's crazy. The I wish you trade more that, man. Of the quick mix theory. See, these are the things I need to teach people about. That this thing did just fall out of a tree. I look at some of this press today, and they're like, all right, hip hop is 50, and, and, and there was this party, and boom. Is that it? It's skip, no. They're skipping a whole process. But it's just skipping a whole process, yeah, yeah, but it's whole skipping process. a whole process of people who actually put in the energy and work. So for me, I had no idea, right? You just follow other DJs and other DJs, what they do, they open up the thing, they get rid of that rubber piece, they cut the plastic, and that's how you DJ. But if it wasn't for Flash's mind of thinking this way, most DJs wouldn't have now that. Come here, now come here. <laughs> now. Now put your head on the chair gently. See, See? now it's now still moving. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh my gosh. And that's the problem. Every D everybody thinks they're DJs. <laughs> that's the problem. So let's play some music now. Let's do it, so, let's do it. so now people don't realize but like like the producer, Dre, Premier, Pete Rock, Battle Cat. Like I could go on and on and on. This sampling thing, this is how the sampling thing tied in to the DJ. Let's take this sample. The name of this song is called Sweet Green Fields by Seals and Croft. Now all this is the extra, but. Bust around, put my hands wow, where my eyes can see. Wow, 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 wow. Right. Wow. Let's listen carefully, y'all. Jesus. Looking that was the bullshit wow. part. We didn't let it go there. So now, using a quick mix theory with the producers, there's just two new machines that come into play. The computer mm -hmm. and the sampler. Mm -hmm. So they would take that same, let's say, quantity of information, put it in, onto a, a floppy disk, put it into the computer and the sampler and hit the space bar and tell the computer, loop this. It's the same thing that I was doing circularly, but now it was computer with the new technology. It. Correct. So let's go. Flip mode. So if you just watch, if you're listening, he's bringing it back and forth without a sa a loop sampler. He's doing it from his hands in a way that you can't even tell he's doing it. So if you were on a dance floor, you would never know what I was doing. Correct. And this is the difference between wow. using the tone arm with DJs that come from our same community and train wrecking Versus the quick mix theory where the arm is 99.9% .9 useless. Let's go to... And while he's going to the next thing, I always want to tell people too is now DJs have it a lot simpler because they have Serato so you could actually see the keys of where you can do it. Back then, he would actually have to memorize where it was on the wax or he would have to put a piece of cassette tape They do it on the crayon. On the crayon and draw it on the record to know where he would have to go back to. Now I see why Correct. DJs used to sweat so much in the 70s and 80s. <laughs> Y'all God rest his soul. But Christopher was my rapper. And I was his DJ. Keep me on it. Wow. <laughs> Now, if you're listening, he's bringing it back using the quick mix theory. 
He's DJing. There's no sample. It's just him. Wow. Let's go a little deeper. Wow. Uh, and a lot of these samples. So when people say to me, "Well, Flash, do a, a, a hip hop set." I'm playing white music. I'm playing black music. I'm playing foreign music. I'm playing American music, mm -hmm. pop, rock, jazz, blues, funk, disco, R&B, because this is what we had before it became modern. Correct. This is all we had. So let me ask you a question while you, you're doing this. So a lot of these loops that you, you're going back and forth with that you were playing at the clubs, these are loops that you would be doing at a party that I'm sure one of these producers heard you do it and say, oh, I'm going to sample this and make it a record. Probably. Got gotcha. you. Probably. Because there's no way in hell I can hear somebody hearing that Busta Rhymes record without a DJ playing it and be like, that's going to be a smash. Like, yeah. that, that had to be, I heard this And this is why the DJ is so important. Like, I just don't understand. Can I have a quick question? Bro? These are the things really people need to really understand. What is so important about the producer and the DJ? You people that uh, press people, you're not talking about this. You're not coming to ask me anything. You ask me, I'll tell you. <laughs> Ho. You teach it, Flash, you teach it. Just Blaze produced the shit out of this record. Oh my god. Wow. Salute to Just Blaze. And this is just like a this is a nobody. This record was probably went double lead. But it takes the genius of a producer to know what this is. And this is what the record really sounds like. We didn't give a fuck about that part right there, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> this is what call, this is what this is what you call digging in the crates. This is what I call it. I'm texting all the young DJs that work here, like y'all should really be in here for this Grandmaster yeah, Flash lesson. I told you that. I text Nyla like you should really be here. I told you that. So now, fam, let's, let's, let's take it a little deeper. Just Blaze, you're a sick individual, man. Your mind little, is crazy. Can I go a little deeper, y'all? Please. You got to go to the mic, though. You got to go to the mic. Please, please. Yeah. I got to ask we one question. We're not question. editing nothing, Flash. Uh, We're not yeah. editing nothing. I got to ask one they question. They going to see this just like this. I got to ask okay, one question, so they too, Flash. Okay, so yes. Why, why don't, you know, when I when I was battling DJ and doing that, I would turn the, teens, the turntables the long way so I wouldn't hit it when I was scratching. Why do you keep yours the regular way? Because most okay. DJs turn it the long way. That's the way I, when I was creating this, this is the way I learned it because I watched the disco DJs and they were always forward. Gotcha. It's just that when I watched the DJs that were in our young community, they were forward too. But it was just somewhat of a nightmare. So now I want to go analog with no help, no net. And this is where you have to learn how to drive. If you didn't know how to drive, mm -hmm. don't get in the car. Just don't do it. This, this is a straight analog. No laptop, no nothing. This is where your forearms two would be tables. strong. Your forearms would be strong because you had to carry crates to the club. So, the mark. When I did this to records, record connoisseurs, DJs that were using the, the tone arm style, Hated my guts. Mm -hmm. Like, who do you think you are putting your fingertips all over the records? Mm -hmm. Now, what I'm going to do is, and I got to show this to you, Envy. Remember I was telling you four bars forward? Yes, six and bars back. I, and, and then when I went four, four revolutions back, I was in the wrong place. I walked away for like a month, because I was stuck. Why is it, if four bars are going forward, why can't I go four bars counterclockwise? Right. And it was in my face, 33. And a third. The third can constitute for the additional two extra ones I have to go back to re-arrive to the top of the break. Mm. So I use so I use the tone arm to just count how many times this line passes the tone arm, and I knew I would be 
back at the top of the break. And this is the seamless loop that the producers adopted to put into the computer. This is the quick mix theory at its purest. That's crazy. I wonder if 33 and a third, that's why you call them so that. I'm sure. DJ 33 and a third. So I don't hear this cueing. Who thought guy 33 and a third? That's crazy. Why okay. he setting that up? You got it? Okay. No, I don't hear it. Turn it up a little bit. Might be the levels on there. Okay. Is it good? And the ground is humming a little bit. The ground is humming. Let's check that ground real quick. You don't know how to do that no more. Of course I do. You might I have don't to believe lick, you. You might have to lick the back of the needle one good time too. Yeah, two, two. Oh, he. I'm a DJ Flash. Don't don't let him don't let him mess you. I'm, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a test I'm a DJ you. I'm gonna test your heart before you get I'm out of here. A, I want to see if you still know <laughs> how to do that. This is where I started. <laughs> Oh, don't get nervous. I don't want to see crib. if you know how to still, still do this. I this in the crib. Okay, he's gonna, he's gonna. Now, yeah, sometimes we we hook up and the, and the grounds are not right. Or the RCA is a little off. Yeah. Did you lick this yet? Yep. See that? You gotta lick the back of it for the connection to be good. <laughs> Cause I don't want to lick. Oh, you know, I don't, you know, don't want to do that. You know, we ain't we ain't doing that. You know. Or, or most DJs lick their finger and then touch the back of it. It's like blowing the cartridge on the Nintendo console. game. You, you, you think you gotta do it? Yeah, what it for you? Pause. You Licking go. and blowing, huh? Pa Yo, shut up, man. <laughs> yeah, we we good now. Okay. But it works, see? Okay, so guys, the seam the seamless loop. You still got a little hum on the right side. I'm gonna play a couple of records, ladies and gentlemen, and this is the quick mix theory at its deepest. Four bars forward. Six counterclockwise. Let's go. Wanna count? One, two, three, four, five, six, check. Throw. One, two, three, four, five, six, check. Throw. Wow. And this works with pop, rock, jazz, blues, funks. Once I figured out that third, we call this hip hop. They call it rock in their family. We call this hip hop. Come up next. Just get ready to count. One, two, Three, four, five, six, check. Throw. One, two, three, four, five, six, check. Throw. The four, six day works on any race, creed, color, groove. One, two, three, four, five, six. And if I ain't sure, one, two, three, four, five, six, check. One, two, three, four, five, six, check. The four, six thing works on any type of record with a beat. But then sometimes there's an exception to the rule. Maybe it's only two bars. And if it's two bars, now it goes from four bars, six counterclockwise, now it's two bars, now it's three counterclockwise to make the full loop. One, two, three, check, go. One, two, three, check, go. One, two, three, check, go. You just gotta explain one, one thing to me, right? I'm, I'm lost. Wow. I, I, I get it. But I, I'm wow. the question. Four bars forward, right? Yeah. But it's not really four bars because it's 33 and a third, so that extra third that, that, that makes third. up makes up for the six when you bring it back. Right, if gotcha. you do the math. Gotcha. Wow. So, so I want you to understand, give me, this is what stuck me. This wow. is why I got stuck. 
I'm in the wrong place. I'm in the wrong place. I, I walked away from this thing. I'm like, damn, what is wrong? And I was staring at it all the time. God is good. The magic so question, why, why don't you think DJs follow that, right? And I'm gonna ask you why, right? Because, can I touch your equipment for a second? Sure, sure, of course you can. If you, you, know you still know how to use it. If you still know how to use it. So for most DJs, right, what, what they used to do is, So when, when you do that, right? Yeah. What they would have to do is, you have to go, go to, until you don't hear it anymore. Right. But in the scene. But but sometimes it breaks in the middle though. Right. But you know, you know the advanced science to this, and I didn't go into that, mm -hmm. is you have to know how it sounds going backwards. Right. Like good times is a perfect example. It goes, like you go, good times. A boodle. But you go, and then you hear good, good backwards. And then you know you're at the top of the g of good times. Like you gotta learn records how they sound backwards, but that's the advanced form of it. And I'm trying to keep it very basic and just uh, I love what it. it is. I love it because I, I, it, more DJs will, will really understand it. So this right here, right? This part right here, right? What I used to see you do all the time, right? Where you, where you, right, crabbing, right, or right. flashing, right, right. Where did that come from? That came from the hand mechanics of the quick mix theory. Because here's how I see it. Whether you are cutting or seamless looping or rubbing the record back and forth with the fader open, scratching, or if you are crabbing, all it is is just an advanced form of opening and closing the paniometer, which is the cross fader. Correct. And why did you, why did you create that? I mean, it's amazing sound. I did it when I used to battle, but. What made you say this is a sound I'm creating with the with the sounds? You know what I mean? Bad Let me tell you bad, something. Bad, bad, I was bad, okay. Bad, bad, you know, but when I heard it, Jeff, scratch bastard, Newmark, talking about Jazzy Jeff, Jazzy yeah, Jeff, one of the best. They, like I am the inventor of the hand mechanics, mm -hmm. but all it is, if you think about it, it's just a matter of when you open and close the fader and what you're doing with the vinyl. So now, so when you are crabbing, you're moving the vinyl a little faster, but you're opening and closing the paniometer quicker. But it's all the hand mechanics. The hand gotcha. mechanics is mine. And the levels, like you, there's this kid by the name of Qbert. Like he, absolutely, Qbert. He's not even, you, a, he's, he's not even human. And 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 uh, Jazzy, Jazzy Jeff. Jeff. Yeah, y'all would, y'all could make people dance by bringing the record backwards and. Crabbing. And it was it was the most amazing thing I've ever seen. And Qbert definitely. And the bad thing about Qbert is you really didn't see Qbert. Right. You just heard his tapes. Right. So incredible. I didn't you know, even met Qbert. Let me ask you a question for Shout out to my, my to my, my first successful student, Grand was at Theodore. You and know? Theodore as well. Yeah. How do you how do you correlate counting the bars on the turntable to MCs counting bars in the booth? It's the same thing. Okay. Mm. It's it's actually the same thing. It's just that um when they're speaking they're counting their verbal bars. I'm counting musical bars. And what's paramount, Shaw, is I have to keep it steady. So I can't, uh, 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 not while they're saying their rhymes, I got to keep it really steady. Mm -mm 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 -mm. And this is what the seamless loop is. So the seamless loop is really called cutting. And the thing that really bugs me with people is they say, I want you to scratch. This is, scratching is just one of the elements. It's elements more like DJing. cutting. It's like actually, a scratch becomes very important when you're scratching against the music that's already playing, or if you're crabbing against the music that's already playing, you know what I'm saying? Or you're transforming. So these are the things, guys, that I really have to go to the universities. Absolutely. Go to the YMCA's and, and, and really show people that this thing called hip hop didn't just and then just fall out of a tree, Shaw. It just you did a didn't. You, you did a birth of a co birth of the culture master class at the Kennedy Center, right? And yeah, I see, did. How was that? Uh, I got two encores. It was absolutely wow. was absolutely wonderful. So now I'm going to be doing birth of a culture lectures, in in the corporate world. But I'm going to do some public ones too because mm -hmm. people need to understand. Much respect to the first party, but there was much more to get us here. 
And that's where people need to understand that this thing took engineering, mathematics, ingenuity, and taking this item and squeezing it with that item to make this all work because I come from a time when it was none it was none of this. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? And that there is what I would wish the press would come ask us. Come come, come ask us. So who made all of the money off of all of these things that you created, Flash? All of them did. Wow. I'm but talking you, about like as far as trademarks, copyrights, like who act that, all of them. Wow. Except me. But you know something? Damn. People ask me this question. If I had it to do all over again, I'd do it all over again. Of course, the love. Same way. Because I love what I do. I'm like, this thing has got me in more trouble with my significant other, my children. You know, I, 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 not proud that I had to leave my children so much to tour and to, mm -hmm. to, and to leave, leave, to get away. But other than that, like, I'm madly in love with this. I, and that's, it's just that right now during this, this, this pivotal time before this thing disappears on the 12th of August, I gotta get where I gotta get. Mm -hmm. And I gotta teach these young journalists and the people that, that do these kind of things like the babies, like listen, this is, this is what it was. What about, okay. a, what about a book? I know you got the adventures of, of Grandmaster Flash, but what about a book? I'm gonna do another one. A quick detail mystery. a lot of this and, because see the, the thing is, and I fall victim to it too, it's like you learn something and a lot of times we're so microwave happy, like we want it fast and we want to do it now that we don't necessarily learn the history of where it came from, you know, mm. which is sad. But in my defense back then we didn't have, there was no internet. There was no way to learn, right. you know what I mean? Right. Unless I was in the Bronx or in the park, you know, as a kid sure. I, I couldn't learn. But now with, with this society, there's ways that you can actually learn where this came from and where it's like, the fact that you invented the slip mat, you know, even though you don't get props for it or, or money for it, but that's amazing. And I think people should understand that because all DJs use a slip mat that use turntables. You know what I mean? Right. And some of those things I think that should be understood. You know, for me, a lot of people say, well, you're not getting no money for it, you know? And this is how I see it, guys. People happily celebrate their birthday. Correct. I don't give a damn about that. When God takes me, my death day, what am I gonna leave for the babies to take it to the next level? Right. My death day was more important than my birthday. Mm. And my birthday is on the most famous day of the year, which is January 1st. Wow. You know what I'm saying? So before I'm out of here, I gotta make sure that the producer and the DJ is respected. Because if, if you think about this, um, if I was the engine and the producers were the fuel the canopy was made very, very easy for the rapper to sit in it and blast off. And that needs to be talked about. Where this thing came from, how did it come about? That's we right. need to talk about this. And this is a black art form, and, I, and I'm hoping that this isn't another form like jazz that go through one thing and all of a sudden it goes left. As long as I'm living, that, that, that ain't gonna happen here. And, and I thank you guys for allowing me to I do, be here, man. I do got one more question. KRS One said that he refused to be a part of the Grammys' 50 Years of Hip Hop mm. special because mm. it took so long for the Grammys to acknowledge mm. hip hop. What do you What do you think about that? And did you get the call? I I, I got the call. There? Yeah, okay. I, I I got the call quite a few times. I know mm -hmm. Harvey Mason Jr. You know personally, um, I respect a man's point of view if that's their point of view. Mm -hmm. You know, but I think for me. I need to be on as many big media situations as possible because I'm really like the last of my kind that's speaking. And after me, there's probably no one. So I thank you guys here. I thank you. I thank you for answering my DM. Absolutely. Come on, you know, man. And we here, and Envy, it's always a pleasure, man. Always a pleasure. Grandmaster Flash, Ladies and gentlemen, they Grand follow Master you in Flash. all that stuff, yeah, Flash. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you, man. And then, uh, I'll be doing these lectures, these corporate lectures, uh, Birth of a Culture lectures. Look for me, and I'm gonna do two free ones, one in the Bronx and one in Manhattan, probably during Black History Month in February. Okay. Grandmaster Flash, y'all. Grandmaster Flash, ladies and gentlemen. Make sure you follow him on, oh, on Instagram, on, 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 all socials. Oh, at DJ Flash Forever on DJ, all socials. Yeah, DJ yeah. Flash Forever. At DJ back. Flash Forever. And can you just turn around, I just wanna read the back of your hoodie, man, because yeah, the hoodie's monumental. It says, the first DJ to make the turntable 
an instrument. First DJ to have a rapper. First DJ to be in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. First DJ to be on Sirius XM. First DJ to get a Grammy. First DJ to get a Polar Prize. Grandmaster Flash. And the Flash, first DJ to give a history lesson about DJing on The Breakfast Club. That's right. <laughs> Grandmaster Flash, ladies and gentlemen. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. Thank you. Wake that ass up. Early in the morning. The Breakfast Club.